Um, and this is another one that chimes with my thinking, and it says, in the end, nothing really matters. Okay. I tried so I tried so hard. I got so far, but in the end, nothing really matters. So I try hard. I'll get so far as I get, but ultimately, so it's about. So I'm a Buddhist rather than Buddhist. And what you do when you practice that type of thinking is you experience compassion for humanity, but you accept that you can't change things. Now, I don't accept that element, so I always try and change things, but I now do so from a um, disassociated stance. So I'll work as hard as I possibly, as, as hard as I can for as long as I can trying to make an event happen if it happens that's great if it doesn't i tried my best very good um i ask you to suggest a book but you also mentioned your book a couple of times what's the title of your book and where can people get it uh well, people can't get it i only printed 50 copies okay. um it is on Amazon and the website. I, I'll send you the link to the website um, in uh, LinkedIn if you want to put it on. Uh, but basically, it's called Children's Spectacular. Why aren't more adults? So one of the things I do is that I understand belief systems create perception. Perception is reality. Therefore, I've constructed five beliefs that I consciously assert during every day as a way that I understand the world. So first belief is equality, everything equality, everything, sexual everything, free will. I don't call free will a choice between a Samsung and an iPhone or this or that. I call free will the ability to go, no, I'm not going to indulge in this staring into screens. I, that's it. The people don't even think they've got the choice. Then uh, my third belief is from Star Trek The Wrath of Khan, where Spock sacrifices himself. Uh, and he goes, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. So I'm the one because I see everybody else as having the potential for relationships and families and what have you. So I will, unless I'm in a rush, which I very rarely am because I plan my day, uh, I will always let someone, not, because I, I, it's hard to find the word, I, I'll always allow someone to flow. I, I don't want to uh, negatively interrupt anyone because the needs of the many, they're, they're doing their thing. So if someone, for example, if I'm driving and a, car, a bus wants to pull out, I'll always let it pull out, even though it's going to slow me down, because there might be 30 people on board. Uh, then my fourth belief is from Kung Fu Panda. Uh, it's every day's a gift. Um, so the phrase is, uh, yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery, but today is a gift. That's why it's called the present amazing profound and then my fifth belief as that i developed from doing this coaching is that children are spectacular why aren't more adults and that is the book goes through my experience it, it, it is interesting but it's the it's the brain spillings of a dyslexic brain not edited by a any editor so there's repetition, there's going to be spelling mistakes, all that sort of shit. And I have also priced it at 50 pounds. It's a, it weighs 1.1 kilos. It cost it cost 12 pounds for a, a good connection postage fees to send him the book. So it, it really is um, something that I did to get all the information written down because as i started to get to the end of the book i kept on reading other books that were saying the same things and it's important that i got mine out at a certain date so that people don't go no you're plagiarizing this or you've you've looked at this and it's amazing how much i intuit that's the dyslexic brain so i now know and i'm now uh targeting a a such a big change that it will be paradigm shifting. Fair play, it's not an easy thing to do to write a book and and uh, 
and by the size and the the, the the amount of stuff that goes in well done um yeah well, send me the yeah, link yeah. I, I will put it i'll put it in uh, in the in the show notes um okay. so before i let you go what are you what are you gonna have for for lunch lunch i'm having a uh organic chicken stir fry um which I, so i i systemized my life so i have I buy my food basically on a four monthly cycle, two whole salmon uh, cut into sections and frozen and 42 chickens um, strips, um, 250 mil is a a great weight, mil, Uh, grams, grams. Um, uh, Yeah, so um, chicken stir fry with uh, egg noodles and vegetables, no, no sauces though. Fascinating. You're buying your, you're doing your food shopping uh, so precisely. I wish I had that that discipline and uh, routine. I don't know what I'm gonna have tomorrow, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to hear that you're gonna have a nice organic chicken. So Jonathan McDonald, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you and uh, fair play for doing um, the social me too and everything else you're gonna be carry on doing and uh, putting yourself first. And um, it's always good to hear from people like you. So. Really appreciate your time and thanks so much really for sharing your story. No, I, I listen. I, uh, if if someone listening to this goes to socialme2.org and wants to get in touch, there's a video of me further down the page. You can click and it emails uh, social me to email because I'll talk to anybody and I want to get as many stories, different stories as possible. They're not all sexual abuse or, or threats. We've got funny. We've got uh, the absurd. We've got uh, you know there are a number of categories. So there is there is scope to leave funny stuff as well as serious stuff. Brilliant. We will do put that in the show notes. So thanks again, Jonathan, and have a good. Did day. you want to ask me about that book? I was read a uh, book I was read would recommend. Oh or... yeah, go for it. Sorry, yeah, might as well go for it. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Right. So. To what extent do you think the listeners of your podcast want to have their blame, brains blown apart? <laughs> I think they already have, so they just kept carrying yeah. on. Yeah? <laughs> All right, then. Okay, so uh, the most exciting book I've read that I... Uh, yeah, okay. Then. So there are so many to choose from, but the one I'm going to recommend is called The Hidden Half. The front cover has a duck on it swimming, so the, the the half below the water and the half above the water. Basically, in the first chapter of that book, it talks about an animal that clones itself, and so we've always thought that genetics or the environment determine your life trajectory. Um, and basically, uh, there's a thing uh, they clone themselves. They thought, oh, we can experiment. So they put group in one tank, group in another tank, alongside each other, same condition, same light, same observer, every single variable that could be out, they tried to remove for any biases, left them in there for a year, grew to populations of four or five hundred, and almost every single one, despite being genetically uh, the same, was different. Sizes, lengths of life, everything, 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 everything. And you go, oh, we thought we knew this and we don't and then the rest of the book goes through and tears apart everything that we think we know <laughs> sounds crazy uh, you did it's... mention yeah i will i will definitely get it it sounds it sounds like uh, something worth um spending a few hours with i will what i'll do is i'll send you a, a link to my review a little five minute review and uh yeah yeah i'll tell this story but you can see i hold up the book so you can see it so uh i'll send you so i'll send you my link and that link right we've taken too much time already not at all listen thanks again and uh, we'll uh, just see you soon and i'll let you know as soon as it goes out brilliant thank you so much and obviously alan bell put me in touch with you uh so thank you alan uh thank you listeners and uh yeah it's been a been a pleasure uh yeah thank you <laughs> all right yeah.